Hey guys, welcome to episode Sunday School. That's right, this is the Daily Devotion, the Quarantine Edition. This is day 6,227,462.1. That's right, boy, that's a lot of days. <laughs> Well, maybe not that many days. This might be like day 50 or so. But still, that's still a lot. 50 days, man. We're trapped in our houses. I, you guys have no idea how much I want to go to the McDonald's Playland and go in all those little bouncy ball pits. I'm going to have so much fun, like me and the and the, and the the pit of the, of the playground. <laughs> those rest of the kids, they're going to have to sit and watch and just be jealous because I'm going to be in there for a few hours. But you know what, today we got some cool stuff. We got another object lesson all the way from Texas, a city called Electra, Texas. Man, that sounds like a pretty <laughs> electrifying place. <laughs> Everybody, let's give it up for Emily! Hello everyone. We are going to start with Sally and the pastor. Here is Sally. Repent. Jesus, please give me a new life to come into my life and change it. And then she goes to the preacher one day. Preacher, I'm ready to get baptized. And the preacher says back to her, Okay, I am going to baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. And then everyone goes, yay! And then she gets the Holy Ghost. And she speaks in other tongues. Acts 2 3. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost! Bye! Emily, great job! You did so well. Thank you for doing that, and thank you everyone that has submitted this so far. If you've already posted one, you can do another one. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time in the history of the Daily Object Lessons, we have a special song. Although, that one of, I don't want no peanut butter or jelly. Now, that was a special song. But this is an even more special song. And it's sang by a special guy. All right, take it away. Brother Greg for blessing us with that song. Man, you just, you knocked it out of the park. We're so thankful for you. Now, we have the joke of the day. And this is, man, this is one of those very divisive segments. You either love it or you hate it or you just don't care. It's just, it's very polarizing, let's just put it there. Well, I guess polarizing would be all one way or the other, so that don't care area kind of messes that up. Anyway, what am I talking about? Joke of the day, do it! And now it's time for your joke of the day. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. <laughs> no idea? No idea? I, none of these jokes make sense. What is wrong with the people that pick these jokes? Oh, oh my word. Anyway, today I am going to do an object lesson about, can you read that? Jesus, that's right, about Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer to everything. And it's going to involve you, but that you refer, refers to you, me, and everybody in the whole world. And it's going to involve... Oh, everybody start weeping a little bit. <laughs> sin. <laughs> that's right, sin. You see, the Bible says that we have all sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. But when we start life, we're like this. You guys see this? It's all clean. It's all pure. We're innocent. We have nothing wrong. Don't we look good? Yeah, we look pretty good. The Bible says we've all made mistakes, though. At first, like when we make a mistake, say we tell a little lie at first. You guys see this here? You know, if you look at it, 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 it's not as clean as it was before, but really, I mean, that's not the end of the world, is it? One little lie, what's it really going to hurt, right? Especially if nobody knows about it. Or maybe I did something wrong, but hey, if I don't tell anyone and no one finds out, it's no big deal. How's it going to affect me? One lie leads to another. One sin leads to another. And pretty soon, we're not looking so hot, are we? Guys, does that look as clean and pure as it did before? Does it? No, it doesn't. Gradually, despite our best efforts, we start to become more like sin than like Jesus. Maybe, maybe we cheat on a test at school. And maybe it's just one answer. Well, the next time we do it, it becomes a little bit easier and a little bit easier. And then we go home and our parents ask about it. And maybe we lie about it to them. Whatever happens, our heart begins to get darker and darker and darker. And eventually we realize that we have a problem. Eventually we realize that we have a serious issue, but we're going to clean it up. And so maybe you try to reach in your heart and you try to pull that sin out and you try to get rid of it by yourself. Do you think that's going to work? Do you think you can pull the sin out when it's mixed up like that? No, no, it's not going to happen, guys. There is nothing that we can do on our own to get rid of the sin in our lives. So we're in trouble, huh? We haven't got any hope in the world. We're toast! You know, it's just time to give up and say, oh well, no, 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 of course not. There is a solution to sin. Jesus loved us so much that he came and he robed himself in flesh. He became a human like us. That's right, the great God, the great God of heaven came down and robed himself in flesh and became a man. He did it because he loved us so much and because he knew that was our only hope to be freed from sin. This great Jesus, he lived and he died for us. He allowed himself to be crucified on a cross. He allowed himself to be beaten and hurt for us. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, repent. That's telling Jesus, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry for the things I've done. God, I'm sorry for that cheating. I'm sorry for the lying. I'm sorry, God, for turning, for turning my clean heart dirty and, and black like this. God, please forgive me. And when you mean it from the bottom of your heart, the Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive us. It doesn't matter how big those things are, how small they are, how old you are, or how young they are. Jesus can forgive you. And when you are baptized in Jesus' name, Acts 2.38 goes on to say, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the washing away of all of your sins. Our hearts are dirty. Our hearts are black. We're full of sin. But when you get Jesus, watch what happens when you allow Jesus to forgive you. And you're baptized in Jesus' name. Watch what happens. He comes into our heart, and all that black stuff begins to be washed away by the power of Jesus. You guys see that? <gasps> look it! Do you see it? You see it clearing up, and you say, God, forgive me. God, I'm sorry. And look at that. All of those sins are washed away. Isn't that beautiful? God can wash us clean and white as snow. The beautiful thing about it, is that yes, yes, we can still sin. Yes, we can still make mistakes. Of course we can. But the blood of Jesus will help us. It will protect us against those things in the future. If you keep prayed up and reading your Bible, when that temptation comes, when that sin tries to enter your life again, if you pray and say, God, help me, when that sin tries to come in your life, look at that. The blood of Jesus continues to wash away all of our sin. And we're clean. But you got to stay prayed up. you got to stay doing the right things. Now, when he was on the cross, the Bible says that he took the sin of the whole world upon him. 
And that sin was poured upon our great Jesus. But he was still blameless and undefiled. So I don't know about you guys, but I want to live for Jesus. I want to give him every part of me. And I want to tell him, God, help me. Help me keep clean. Help keep that sin out of my life. Because he lived and he loved us and he died for us so we could ever overcome sin. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for a God that loved me that much. Until next time, guys, let's keep clean. Let's try to keep our hearts right. And let's keep living for him in Jesus' name.